Jake and Brandon's help, it is a part, but none of these stinking pins gave way to pressure or heat or oil. But a saw blade, well, that did the trick on all of them. And we got at least one more up here, but it's a drive shaft that's keyed, so I'm not crazy about cutting it up. We're going to try and get it out. It's got a couple of bearings in here, but I certainly don't want to destroy anything in that worm drive, so we're going to take it apart and try and get that off first. That's got a bushing in there. Okay, we've been talking about this on Facebook. And if you want to join our Facebook group, it's SV Seeker. It's the group on Facebook. And uh, that's where I go to ask, hey, how do you think I think this is, should come apart and it's put together? There might be grub screws underneath this cable, but I, there may not be two because there is a keyway as well here. So, But if there is grub screws and we bang on it, we're only screwing ourselves. So we're going to take the cable off. How to unspool 200 feet of cable? The lazy man's way. You get it slow, but you get it. So all we did is we hooked up our little pump here directly into the motor that drives the worm gear. So now you can see how a worm gear works. Now the really cool thing about worm drives is you cannot pull on that cable hard enough or try and rotate this shaft hard enough that it will make that screw turn. It just will not do that. The screw can turn the gear but the gear can't turn the screw so it automatically locks up if the hydraulic hose break if power went down he could pull as much as he wanted to on that cable and it is just mocking his efforts there is no way that screw is going to rotate if you put a crazy amount of force on it you would simply shatter something so the way this cable attaches to the spool is with a piece of crimped on steel it has a better name doesn't it I think it's a Babbitt. A Babbitt. That's what we call them at work on our giant steel cable. Okay. And this one's crimped on, but I've seen them melted on too, like out of lead. Yeah. We'll have to figure out a way. Better. Do they? Yes. Well, we'll have to figure out a way of doing it because we're going to have to rebuild a cable. They're called ferrules or ferrules uh, for electrical cable. I don't know if that would be strong enough. Well, sh yeah, probably would. It doesn't really have to take much. That's kind of the magic of a spool. You don't really got to take all the weight right here. Once you get uh, three wraps around this thing and five is even better, you've got so much friction built up around it that you could lift it, the load that would split the cable apart. And so you really don't have to sweat it too much. So we'll, yeah. we'll crimp something back. Oh, I got a hydraulic thing I can crimp maybe. Yeah, we'll see. So on our manual winches on the on the boats, um, we do. It's always the rules of three. So you, you put the the cable in, and it's got a little um, U-bolt that uh, clamps it in place, and then you get three wraps on it, and then you're good. Having saw cut these pins out, we're left with these pins stuck in the side of the crane. So I'm gonna try and plasma torch a little notch in here, so that uh, we can get a pin in there and drive this sucker out. Alright, that'll leave you a hole. Unless you hit it right in the middle. further back yeah. it's moving is it it is oh yeah yeah it's working hey yeah. hallelujah so the motor's gonna come off with the shaft yep once it's past the keyway this should slide out we got another inch two to go <laughs> <laughs> give it everything you got <laughs> 
Oh, Jesus, man. All. That is an impressive shaft, Mark. I'll give it all two and a quarter inches. Three. Cool. Hold it. Let me grab the drum. Good catch. Five tons ain't gonna be enough. There we go. Yeah, there good. it comes. Ooh. It is. Cool. Chris Pilling donated that uh, pneumatic wrench. We had to rebuild it several times to get it working, but man, is it lovely to have it working. Just needed some cleaning and tender loving care. Here's the ring gear down inside. Boy, look at that thing. It's just filled with gradu. Uh, These are the bolts that were from the top that we just took out. So I think that's all that's holding it on. These two back here and those two in the front. It doesn't have any force to really to make it work. So I think we just pound on it here and we get it to move. It's a trust exercise, right? Yeah. <sighs> Okay. It's going in. Look at the gap. Oh, I thought this ring would move in. I would too, but we've it's got this other it. one that's moving. We got a quarter of an inch gap here under the motor. Yeah, so it's going. There it is. Stop now. Sure enough. Ah, cool. Hey, Doug. You think it's out? I think it's out. <laughs> okay. Now that the motor is off. We can get these cap screw bolts out of here. There's four of them. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. <sighs> okay, it bulges out on the bottom side. Right, because that's what we're Easy enough. Can you saw. use protruding in a sentence? <laughs> My penis was protruding and she screamed. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it's got a bearing in there. Didn't have to. Yeah. But we need it. Try and get some of that sand out of there. Almost see the teeth in it now. There we cut off one of our steel brushes. It's worked great for cleaning threads. Okay. Oh yeah. That's nice. Yeah, there's water grease. Yeah, it's stiffer, but that's because of the grease. You got heavy in, don't you? Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. Ah, I just love this tool. Well, hell's bells. I built the damn thing too short. So, you know, we need push through 10 inches, but I got to get the beam in here. So it needs to be up here. So we do it again. All right, we got it. Look at that. It's out. We oh my gosh. One down. Yeah, I cleared. It's well, equalizer. No, no, counterbalance valve. That's the name they use. I call it a holding valve, the counterbalance valve. Either way though, it's gonna, when it gets loose, it's gonna pop. <laughs> Listen to that noise. Oh. This jack just wants to die in such a bad way. Yeah, I don't blame it. The key came out. If I was as old as hard used as that jack is, I'd want to die too. <laughs> I knew it was going to do that. Oh, it's there it is. Okay. I wonder. Uh, this is the cylinder that uh, raises the boom, and on the back of it here, where it would uh, sense the load that's on the boom, it has a pressure switch. It's just a switch. I mean, it's literally just two wires, and what it would do 
is it would uh, shut off the um, the ground to all the solenoids so no solenoid would work if this was actuated so if you're trying to lift something that's too heavy it stops lifting but if you had something up in the air and it got heavier it would also stop letting you do anything with it yeah i don't like that so it's not going on the crane That should be the last one, right there. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Up she goes. Put your ass into it again. Ah, uh, we're gonna need another one. Okay. Friction. It's wind, it's wind. Wind caught it. Yeah, wind caught it. Okay. Right. I can't move it. Hmm. I ain't got my feet on the ground. Oh, well, I'll hold it down, you climb off. It'd be best if I turn this around to the hole closer to that side. Oh, this gets easy on that old. Yeah, better. <laughs> good thing we old the floor. Okay, I gotta raise my hand up. What do you think the chances of it just popping out are? I don't know. I'd say next to none. That's a long pipe. No way. Well, maybe way. No. Nah, shit. God damn, the stand just rotated. Did it? Yeah, it broke this weld and turned. Oh crap. Yeah, do it again. More weld. Ah, that's much better. Okay. Standing right there, I think I'd reach you with a flame. I'm gonna move over here because I don't want you to. I got oil. I got oil. You're covered with oil. Bert, oh Bert was there one moment, then spontaneous <laughs> combustion, I swear. Yeah, it was. Spontaneous bark combustion. Now, I can smell the gas, but I can't light it. There we go. There it goes. Should roll. Beautiful. Yeah, it's gonna go. Yep. All right. Now we were talking about hot dip galvanizing this, but unfortunately we'd have to sandblast off all the paint, including the paint that's up inside, and that is just hard to do. So we're gonna go with uh, sandblast and powder coat instead. And so what Kareem is doing here is he's rounding over the edges of the seal because when they made this at the factory, they made nice sharp edges. The paint sticks to rounded edges much better and they're a whole lot easier to fall against. If you make the stroke all the way from top to bottom, it'll be a little smoother as well. Nice. Not that it matters so much that much more, but that is great. That'll be fine. Okay. Use a big grinder to do that much uh -huh. and then get that sanding disc, flat disc thing. Okay. And you could be able to smooth this out even better. Okay. Actually, we like it to have some tooth to it because the paint just grabs onto that and holds on better. Uh -huh. Because uh, what you're doing is you're keeping the paint from chipping off a sharp corner and you're also meaning that when somebody falls against it, they're less likely to open up a blood injury. Am I going to interrupt you, Bart, if I keep on grinding? Probably not. <laughs> Let's go with Doug's son. Yeah, this is Korean. Korean's never TIG welded, so starting him out on the hard stuff. Yeah. Okay, I need to take off another 16th of inch. Nice. First 
TIG weld, he ground it, but it actually looked pretty before he ground it. Stainless steel TIG rod makes great pins. Give them a little bend and they stay in there. Okay, I got my handy dandy little Harbor Freight uh, hydraulic kit out and we have to uh, heat this thing up. I'm gonna use this to hold an anvil up against that because see we bent it trying to get the pins out. Lao Tzu, learn like you're gonna live forever. Yep. Live like you're gonna die tomorrow. Lovely, okay, light her up, heat her up. This one. I think we're done with the welding and grinding. A little dusting of snow last night. And the shop is an absolute pit. I mean, there is grit laying on top of everything. So I think first thing to do is clean up. Yeah. Much better. A couple hours work, clean floors at least. We're gonna have to paint these cylinders. Oh, too much Mexican food. <laughs> Eva, is it there? It's coming. Now we're there. Right to the paint? Right to the paint. All right, so we shouldn't matter if we paint the rest of that. Okay, so one of the next jobs is to tap holes for Zerks, and we're gonna replace all the Zerks in here. You know, I didn't even know it, but uh, they have a style of Zerk in, on this machine that's just punched in, it's just press fit, and so you just yank them out. I like the threaded ones, because you know, if you break the head off, you can turn that hex head out there and replace the thing. So we're putting in uh, quarter 28 Zerks. And I finally found a drill tap chart that I like and you really need one of these around. They get more picky than this one. Sometimes it matters whether you're using stainless or steel or aluminum what the base material is. But this one is easy to read and it's got metric over here too. I'll put a link to this one in the description. All it is is a PDF. Download it, print it off whenever you want it. And it's nice to have it up in your shop. But there's our quarter 28 there. It says we use a drill size 3 which is a 1564 and that's all you're looking for and when you get the right drill size the the tapping will be so much easier so you can use regular blade to cut through aluminum you don't need one of the no. ones that are just a disc no a carbide blade will go through aluminum hard on it but it'll do it beautiful see this is one of those zerks that just press fit in there it doesn't have a hex head on it so that is a pressed on one no threads on it. Well, we went and got a sharp tap for Krim to tap that Zerk in. And I'm working on my welding gun again. I tell you what, this thing, every time it breaks, it's just something simple. So this time it's the switch. And if you don't have an ohm meter, you got to get you one. This is a multimeter. It does DC and AC voltage and all that stuff. But the easiest thing it does, and you can get these with batteries and a light bulb, 
it beeps when the two things are connected. So it was easy to figure out that it was my switch on the gun that wasn't working anymore. Took it apart, put some sandpaper to it, and now it's working. And see, that's the plug that goes into the machine. So two of those are power out to the motor and two of them are the switch. So it's just a matter of, you know, put the little prongs down on that, close the switch and see if anything happened between any of them. Nothing was happening, so that's what told me it was a switch. A little sandpaper down there on the contacts and that'll go back to work. And we heated up the steel on this piston to drive the uh, pin out of it and we probably hardened the steel up so it's making this tapping for exert a little more challenging. So a brand new tap is sharper and seems to be getting deeper, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot better. All right, sharp tap for the win. The rim is making one more pin for the crane here and Jake showed up again this morning. He gets cleanup duty. He managed to get this cut even with the wrong bit. So ordered some bits last night. Did we do this wrong? So sure it was inch and a half. I would cut that wrong. We can't buy washers to the thickness we want, so we're making them. And I cut these holes the wrong size, so I gotta make that bigger. I fucked up. <laughs> I can't do anything on film. I, I, it's pressure. It's pressure, buddy. It's stress, man. Ah. I'm not a movie star. I'm a redneck. There's a difference. So I'm just putting a dot so I can see where the center is so I know where to hold this. That's enough. Yeah. Oh, you don't need another one. That's big. That looks good. And now we got a two inch hole. I'm taking chips off, so I think it's burned down. Yep. Good. There you go. That looks good. Now we're down to making pens. This is, uh, I don't know what this started life as. Came out of a horse trailer. And those are actually washers we picked up at the scrap yard. We're gonna get those to the pipe fist through them and that'll be a, another pen. Uh, this is this side was going great here. Man, that, yeah. that didn't need to be touched with the grinder. And then I had to turn it so I like, fucked it up just a little bit. Yeah, no, it looks great. It's gonna be perfect for what it's gonna do. You did it wrong, it's all wrong. Is I have a mission near Kus Imak. Now what does it actually mean? Kiss your if ass? If this isn't good, then f your mom. <laughs> that is very much improved. Well done. What do you think? You got recommendations for people? You Take just... your time, even make sure you don't use yeah. too much of the filler rod. Make sure you spread that out nice and slowly. A nice horseshoe helps it spread out evenly. And let it cool down let it cool down yeah we're living in a cool age i mean filters that'll remove salt from seawater and rope that weighs nothing that's stronger than steel i have never been a fan of wire rope okay i've had many of these things stuck in my hand because it starts to, to, to fray and it does cut nicely with an angle grinder, but then you gotta put these eyes in it and you gotta put a crimp in it. It's just hard to put back together. You can splice these. The new school stuff's more expensive. 3 8 inch Amsteel Blue. It's a um, Dyneema rope that has an, a coating over it for to help with the abrasion and the UV. It doesn't like abrasion. Now, wire rope, I pull that stuff across rocks. Of course, it'll fray a little bit after a while, but it does take the abuse this you don't do that with this this doesn't like sharp edges that will cut but look how easy this will be to splice you just press it together 
and it all splays out there and so you can easily run your uh, line back into it and it'll pinch down when it draws tight so easy to splice and the other cool thing is it'll float cool. sure enough that is cool I've never guessed now I got this on sale from uh, Go To Marine. It cost $1.86 a foot. And that's probably twice or more what you'd have to pay for steel cable. But it's not gonna rust. It's gonna last a long time if you take care of it. Whereas steel cable will start to fray and wear out. So, I, you know, really in the long run, the cost isn't even that bad. But the other advantage is the block doesn't have to be so heavy because the wire rope requires this massive heavy block to keep it straight hanging down where we can go now go with a real lightweight block or a crane sheaf. So we've reduced the weight substantially. I mean, this is all aluminum. And doesn't weigh nearly what, oh my God, that did. So that's two one inch thick plates. Got him here is into uh, making a new gasket for our gearbox. New bearings would be better. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yep. I burned my hand twice now. I got all up my arm yesterday. Did you? I don't even know what I did. I just felt it burning when I woke up this morning. Oh, that's uh, welding. Yeah. Yeah, that's a weld burn. Congratulations. You're not a virgin anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get this off before we can lift this up. How do you get that off? Well, I thought it would come. Right, we had a rhythm. Okay, hold on. I don't think it moved any. That almost looks like a shaft that would push out, doesn't it? I don't see it moving. Nope. It's more like a seal cover or something like that. Yeah, you prime it. There you go. Makes sense that there's bearings there, but I don't know if that's going to help us get the other thing out at all. And wiggle them a little bit. Kind of. Jake is back over, which is nice. He's taking mechanical engineering at school and we're trying to figure out how to get this worm drive apart. No. Nope. nope. Like That's that. right, you do have that. That would work that. fantastic. Every time you hit, my hand moves further. Hey! Woo! That was fantastic. What I think that they did is they probably had this assembled first and then just pressed the, uh, the shaft in here with these keyways. Like they had this already meshed with the worm. Oh, and they, they meshed the pressed, gear with the worm and then, and then they, they put the, the shaft, shaft into, into the gear. Yes. Yeah, what? why is this such a problem to get off now? Maybe because it's it was just 60 years old. Yeah, <laughs> a million different things. It could, could be, be yeah. tight tolerances uh, and so they just, and they also had a big shot press, I guarantee it. Okay, so we need to get this gear the rest of the way off. Yeah, here's what we built, another press. Oh no, it's coming off. How is it? Yeah, watch the top of the gear. I'm on the line. Oh up. yeah, you're doing fine. All right, off. Right. Okay. Everybody that's, a bit more everybody that's not doing something can do it better than you. Honestly. Yeah. There's 5,000 people watching this right now telling you how to do it. Oh, there are? Yeah. Yay! Now we gotta find it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's still, still glowing orange down there. Oh, I think it finished. It had a baby. Nice noise. It did. Right. Sorry, that was a solid turn. Look, and people say I don't use metric, see? <laughs> I mean, this is actually then part of the bearing. Yes, it is. You can actually see the wear on it there, and there's a whole bunch of needles in there, rollers. Here we go. Ah, Ooh. easy enough. Well, if we just clean them out, we'll be fine. If they aren't shit. It doesn't sound not. good. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound fantastic. Let's just change them out. They're a bitch to get. I them. agree. I love that I'm holding this up with my, my nuts. I got that shit right between. I can hold it for each one. I don't want you to hold my nuts. Oh yeah, this thing, this bear is all rusted up here. Look at that. Look at that. Set in water for a while. See that part of it? It's all corroded. Oh yeah, that's gross. 
then I'm going to take these out too, but then I'm going to put the tension on the door. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yep. Oh, God, that's horrid. Okay. Right, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> it's working. It's now we can get under it already, can't we? Yeah, we can yeah. pry it up now. There we go. I think that the roll pin is just in there so you don't go too far. The baby frame. Look at that. Look how well that's going to work. Wow. Hmm. That. That's kind of scary tight. Trouble with the law if you're doing <laughs> something like that. <sighs> you know what I say, do it till it breaks. No. It'd be a horrible idea. Maybe it goes that way. Maybe so. Let me try it. Come on. Ah. And we get this it totally key out is now. Just depth, dude. Really? Yeah. We're discussing the roll of that pin in there. It's just a roll pin. And that's all it does. It keeps this part off the bottom of that housing. Wow, one hit. Okay. Karim and I and Jake have taken apart all the worm gears. Karim and I laid them out so that it makes sense to us. This is kind of like having a uh, pictorial uh, diagram because there is no diagram that we can find for this thing. So I'm going to walk you through it just real quick. Okay, motor, coupler, housing, keyed in. Uh, worm gear into the main housing, uh, ball bearings on either end that work with thrust bearings, some kind of a strange braking device which we're talking about on Facebook. I don't know what that is. It's, uh, we'll get back to that later. Um, so let's see the worms with well, the outside plate, the worm gear, the, the plate that it bolts to that uh, is keyed into the shaft that goes through the spool with bearings and split couplers on either side of that, that's the winch. Then the worm gear that does the rotation of the crane, you know, the left and right thing. The pinion gear uh, goes down into the rack gear and then, see, it lets it spin the crane up top sitting on that. Two big keys go into its uh, uh, worm gear and then the worm drive is in the bottom. It has a ball bearing over here. That's just an oil filled cap on this end. This end's a little interesting. It's a machined with a nice big uh, OD flat surface and they have a roller bearing that goes in there and because that doesn't do thrust, you know, when this motor uh, goes one way and then the other, it's, it's going to want to drive that worm screw this way or that way until it starts you know turning this gear up here so they have a thrust bearing that's in there as well you can see those little rollers in there and that thing gets flattened out between uh, uh, the end of this and this housing here an o-ring in there and the motor and we're all done so okay it's gasket making time the machine's dirty enough, you don't need to do this, but we use Never Seize on there. So you just spread some on there and press the gasket down into it. I rolled it down with a bearing, and what it does, it leaves where the hole is, like a negative image. And a dead blow hammer really works with these punches much better than a regular hammer. There's the resulting gasket. Lovely. Now we just need, what, six more? Okay, we made like seven stops this morning, but we found all the bearings and seals here in town. Lovely. I love Tulsa. But we like this paper stuff better than the cork. Cork is just too easy to tear. It's good for big gases, but it's terrible for the real thin ones. And once you start punching all the holes through it, it gets iffy around the holes. So much preferred the paper stuff. Oh, it feels lovely. The seal can go in next. Okay. Oh yeah. Clean as a whistle. There's no seal on this one because it's all flooded with oil. One of the things we learned is that these are called angular ball bearings. And if you look at this lip here, it's larger over here. It's meant to take force from this side pushing that way. So it's kind of like a thrust bearing, which is meant to take loads not just straight down in this line, but axial loads that push that way too. And only in one direction, so it's meant to push. And the push comes from the worm drive screw, because when it turns, you can see it's pushing this direction, so there's a counter push the other direction. And when it turns the other way, it starts pushing against that end, hence the angular bearing 
turned like that so it can take those forces. If you look at the outside ring, it's got a lip on it too. There's kind of like a bevel in there almost on it. Bearing first, then the worm screw, then the big gear that the worm screw turns, and then the shaft that comes through that which locks it into the worm screw. That is the reassembly order. So it's a shelf that'll stop it from going all the way? Yeah, it's got a shoulder in there. I'm gonna push it all the way to the shoulder. Eighth of an inch from there. How is this thing oriented? This is the bottom. So we want this to go up. I think. If we're wrong, we can just unbolt it and turn it. Can you ever have too much never sees? Good. Oil squirted out. This is the thrust bearing. Each of those is just a little roller. It just rolls on top of that washer. And there's another one on top of it. How do we not have one there? Oh, this side. That's the oh, this goes down. Yeah, that goes down. Shit. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, looks like a beautiful fit. There wasn't a washer between those two surfaces. It was up here to hold the keys in. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Now, keys. Heat that. Cool this. Let's see, little holes go toward the inside. So about like this. Nice. Hadn't gone in yet. Oh. Yeah, it's going. I got it lined up. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. All right, here you go. Now we can stand it back up again. Okay. Wait. Little ones that way. Yeah, okay. Do your worst. Well, not your worst. Oh yeah. Move fine. Move. That looks pretty damn good. Let's drop a bolt through and make sure it's gonna be happy. Oh Ready? it's happy. Nice. Oh man, that is smooth. Alright, excellent. Now just the motor. Wait a minute. Did we put this in backwards? Yes. Fuck. Okay, that's the side that takes pressure. So it goes here. That'll hit the outer raceway. Oh, you want the inner one? You gotta have the one that hits the inner raceway. Yeah. And, and one more little one. Good. Goes into here. We'll put a little oil on her. And the socket underneath to hold it all up. Uh, yeah, your big socket, because we want to drive it from the outside this time. Yeah, one more little one. This side goes in. Ready? Mm hmm. A little more. Yeah, good. Lovely. So this would be like yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Here we go. They actually have a drain hole in this because the only thing that's housed in here is a coupler, so get the drain hole down. This is just way too nasty to show on camera, okay? I've shoved never sees down in there barehanded to get it all over everything because that is uh, open to the air. It's got a drain port on the bottom of it there. Uh, it's not in the flooded section of oil because that's just a coupler between the hydraulic motor and the worm screw. We even made this gasket here for just to try and keep a little more salt water out of there. But with all that anti-seize in there, that helps. And we're gonna cover this with anti-seize too. Yeah, that's all good up too. Yeah. Okay. This isn't right. Yeah, that's not right. Oh, this is the top. Did we put this on wrong? I don't remember it being like that. We didn't put it all together backwards, did we? I thought these things stuck that way. That's... Yeah. Okay, but those hoses aren't facing the right direction. Over here is the brake. That's what I thought. But I don't remember those hoses going forward, so... Oh, there it is. That doesn't look good. We got it completely backwards. Oh, fuck. Well, 
it's all greased now anyway. That won't be a problem. We should have been looking at our pictures putting it together more because that confirms we did it wrong. That housing is upside down here and the motor is over here, yes, but only when the housing's the other way around, which puts the motor it's supposed to be over there. So if you haven't ever done that yourself, you will. <laughs> and when you do, eh, take heart. Won't be the last time either. Redone on the right side. The nice thing is you get a lot faster when you do it the second time or third time or fourth time. And we've changed the orientation of the motor because there's a drain hole and they had the drain hole up here on the side, which uh, is the reason why this is half full of rust in here. We're gonna actually let it drain if it gets any water in there. Okay, for the record book, here is the documentation on the winch and I have this brake figured out. This is amazing. Okay, so there's the spool, right? The cable goes over the top of the spool. That's important because the spool wants to go this way when it's being loaded by something out of the crane and when and that's also the force direction when it's trying to pick this thing up it's you know wanting to go that direction think about that there's a shaft that goes through that comes in through the back there's a gear here meshes into the worm screw here so basically this is the same orientation as that spool so the force is this way right so if we're pulling it the cable in we're doing like this and that screw would have to be rotating uh what would be looking at it from this way clockwise to get that yeah motion like that right so we know that this is spinning like this everything is fine and dandy in the world but we have also learned that you know there is a little bit of slope to this of course and there's slope to the teeth on the gear there in a really bad situation this thing apparently can slip right and make that screw turn now i would think that you destroy this before that happens and the anchor winch doesn't even have it but this thing has a protection against it it's a break and this is that break and remember this is turning that way it's got grooves in here and it's interesting because they tell you on a little label up here that says break number one and look here there's a number one and a number two and watch this i tried to measure these and didn't see anything then i set it down flat on the table and watch put the ball there ball rose to the other side of that huh and then watch this you put the ball on this one and it goes the other direction they go right so the orientation of this against that makes a difference of whether you're doing the cable over the top of the spool or the cable under the spool if you're going under the spool you put these in number two because what happens then when it since it's lower here it's not breaking as much and remember it's turning this way and that means that this is turning this way so if everything's turning that ball goes to the low end and it relaxes the pressure on the brake meaning because you're trying to lift it but if it starts sliding on its own the ball goes to the other end it's a shallower groove there because it doesn't want to stay there and it pushes this plate into this brake shoe into this shoe into a adjustment that you have on the back and it starts to stop itself okay and this is old school they use electronics to do this thing now i like old school and i am not smart enough to know that on my own i know that because of the people helping me on facebook it's the sv seeker group on facebook you can join that and i post a little video up there describing my uh quandary about what that thing was and i got a lot of good answers in fact there's 66 people that's just that uh, commented back on this and alvin was uh, the guy that uh, was most helpful here i think because he knew that these things were uh shallower in one end than the other and boy that sure made sense to me when i learned that thank you very much to alvin and jonathan and you know michael and all you other guys out here commenting on that that's very helpful. That is why we call ourselves the boat, the internet bill. Good. Okay, I'm gonna split collar on this side. And this bearing actually rides in the uh, crane housing itself, right in this slot here, and then the other side goes there. Okay, two worm drives back together very happy with that and it's wonderful knowing how they go together too and how they work so it's time to turn off the videos get out in your shop make something what did you make today
Last Sunday night, I wrote a letter to my loved ones, 